Hello, sorry if the title is a bit worrying if you've got one of these radios or possibly a T12, but we found a problem on it and I wanted to bring people's attention to it quickly so no one lost any models. And I really have to thank uh, Tom McCrudden for this one, who followed one of my tutorials on OpenTX about using the voice timer, which I find very useful, and wrote me a note to say he found there was a problem it was hitting the 10 second mark and then it was losing signal and his quad was dropping out of the sky. He was using XM Plus, pretty good receiver. Um, Wanted to know if there was a problem. I had a quick test on this one that evening. I, I, I got to 10 seconds, nothing seemed to happen um, and it, it seemed okay. So I asked him if it was reproducible, if he could put a quad on the floor, just run it up and, and do the same thing. And he came back and said, yes, he managed to do it. And sometimes it was at 30 seconds. Sometimes the samples would miss and not be there. Sometimes it was at 10 seconds. So obviously it wasn't a fixed point. So I was thinking back and when I uh, reviewed the radio, although I was flying it and I had the vocal alerts on, it's very rare I ever got anywhere past like 30 seconds. So maybe I didn't hit this and I didn't hit it in that quick test. So I went back and I tested much more thoroughly. I, I changed my timer to a minute and I did some hover tests in the garden, I did some static tests on the floor, and I was able to replicate the problem. Um, I've gone out and I've tried to capture exactly what it looks like, so take a look. 30 seconds, oh. telemetry lost, telemetry recovered. That was a very quick one, hit on 30 seconds instantly. 30 seconds. 20. Down again. Five, four, three, one. Timer one elapsed. Telemetry lost. Down again. Telemetry recovered. So yeah, basically, whenever the radio says something, there is a chance of it just losing the signal completely and the quad will drop out of the sky, which is very worrying. And although I was testing on an SPI a receiver there, it obviously happened on like a, a, a proper receiver like an XM Plus and stuff like that. Now, uh, both myself and Tom, we tried several things. I was on uh, OpenTX 234, he was on 237, which is the latest version. Um, I did upgrade to that version to see if there was still the problem and I could confirm there was. We both tried different SD cards. I put like a really fast class 10 in there, we reformatted. We also noticed that sometimes the radio forgot to say something. So sometimes it would miss like 30 seconds and just say seconds. Other times when it's doing the countdown, it would say 10, nine, six just like that, which is really odd. So we couldn't really explain it. Um, I went out and I started looking through um, on OpenTX for any known issues. I also pinged a message to Jumper, but being unable to find anything, I opened up um, an issue on the OpenTX GitHub page with the details of what the problem was. Now they came back and say, please try nightly. This may be related to an issue we fixed. So I went out and installed a nightly build for the upcoming 238 and it's called N189. It's basically the nightly build for the, I think the 20th of April and tested that in the radio. Now I have to say that this isn't suggested as a fix. There's, there's no way you should use this in general flying. And when you turn on the radio, it absolutely made clear this isn't for flying. This is just for testing. You don't know what potential bugs are still left in there until it actually gets into the 238 release. Now I tested this lots and lots of times, uh, down on the floor just spinning props, uh, took it out for a hover test and I captured a bit of that footage here. That's good. Pass. 
So as you can see, that's working. So that's gonna be fixed, but it's not fixed now. Now I did ask what the problem was, because I obviously had a search through the open issues and couldn't find it. And it turned out to be um, a DMA conflict between the module and the SD card. And if you look at the information in that issue, there's, there's not a lot there to suggest what it was. In the meantime, Jumper did actually come back to me, but despite me telling them the full details about it being a T12 Pro and the fact that we tried all the latest uh, OpenTX firmware, they suggested I needed to update the firmware and gave me the links for the T16 Pro, which uh, was a bit weird. Perhaps something got lost in translation there. So I just wanted to bring this here as a warning. Anybody that's got a, a Jumper T12 Pro, don't use the voice alerts. And in fact, even if you put it on for timer for beeper, when it expires, it will say timer one elapse and that can lose the signal as well. So if you've got a T12 Pro, my advice is not to use a timer or in fact, just take the SD card out. Unless there's something on there you need, like one of the Lua scripts, don't use it because whenever it's gonna get any sort of vocal sample from that, there's a risk that it might lose the signal with the quad. But if you remove it, obviously you still got your model memory in there. You, do, you don't take any of that risk until it's fixed at 238 at least. The actual issue for this problem said it was on T12. I don't know if the T12 has the problem as well. I kind of assumed not, else more people would be talking about it and it would be reported. So it's certainly bad on the T12 Pro. If you've got a T12, if you use the the voice sample countdown, perhaps you can just confirm it's all good on yours or that if there's a problem as well and then other people know about it as well. Anyway, that's the video for today. Hope it helps and we'll look forward to getting 238 so I can go back to using voices again. I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.